everyone in this video we will be talking about unbalanced forces so here we have an example of a toy car and we know that uh, what are the forces acting on this toy car the first one will be the force of gravity which is due to its weight towards downward direction and the second one will be the force of reaction which is in the upward direction and this force is exerted by the ground to the toy car the third force can be the force of push that we apply uh, if we want the toy car to move now when we push this toy car the fourth force comes into play which is the force of friction which happens to be equal and opposite to the force of our push and this force of friction doesn't let the toy car to move now let us say the force of gravity be 30 newton and the force of reaction let's say it is minus 30 newton since its magnitude is equal to the force of gravity and this force is opposite in direction to the force of gravity now suppose the force of our push be 15 newton and the maximum force of friction for this toy car let's say it be minus 10 newton since it is acting opposite to the direction of our push we will take it as negative and we push it we push the toy car with a force of 15 newton let's say now the net force on this toy car will be the addition of all these four forces and this will be equal to 15 minus 10 which is 5 newton these two forces that is the force of gravity and the force of reaction exactly cancel out each other that is why we have taken these two forces only for the net force so the net force is calculated to be 5 15 minus 10 which is 5 newton so here the net force is not zero since we have pushed the car with a force of 15 newton here now what will happen when this force net force is not zero as we saw in case of balanced forces here the net force is 5 newton it's not zero so what happens is the toy car starts moving with the force of 5 newton so here the toy car moves with the force of 5 newton in the direction of greater force and here the greater force was the force of our push so it moves in that direction that is the direction of push because it was a greater force of 15 newton now this force is not zero that is the resultant of all the forces acting on the toy car was not zero so here we call this force which is not zero is uh, uh, to be unbalanced forces so these set of forces which do not add up to zero or which add up to a non-zero number is are said to be unbalanced forces so we define these unbalanced forces as if the resultant of all the forces acting on a body is not zero the forces are called as unbalanced forces now let us have a look at some examples of unbalanced forces let's say we have a wooden uh, box lying on the ground we know that there are four forces acting on this box which is at rest first one is the force of gravity the second one is the force of reaction and they exactly cancel out each other being equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so i have not shown these two forces here the rest of the two forces we will be looking at in this case let us say we uh, push this box with certain force and uh, the moment we start pushing this box the force of friction comes into play in the opposite direction of motion of the box i mean the uh, force of push the force of fr friction comes into play in the opposite direction to the force of our push now say uh, let's say we push this box with a force of 80 newton per suppose now uh, when we push it with 80 newton the force of friction becomes 80 newton and is in opposite direction to the force of push and thus the body that is the box doesn't move at all and when we increase the force of our push the force of friction also goes on increasing now suppose we make it to 90 newton newton if we push the box with a force of 90 newton the force of friction also increases from 80 to 90 newton but there is a limit to the force of friction beyond which it cannot increase so let's say the limit of this force of friction be 100 newton beyond which it cannot increase it cannot become 101 newton 
for this particular body let's say so when we apply a force of 150 newton the force of friction will be the same that is 100 newton since it cannot exceed 100 newton now here the force of friction cannot become 150 newton since there is a limit to the force of friction and here comes an unbalance in the net force acting on this box so what is the unbalance let us calculate so the net unbalanced force acting on this box is 150 minus 100 which is 50 newton so this box has a net force of 50 newton acting on it and as a result this box starts moving now to move this box we have exerted a lot of force that is a huge amount of force that is 50 150 newton but the toy car was able to move only with 5 newton force right this is because the toy car has a very less area of contact between uh, uh, its wheels and the ground and that is why the force of friction is very very less for the toy car and also the weight of the toy car is very less so uh, this also contributes to less frictional force in the case of toy car but here in the in this case we have a heavy wooden box whose full bottom area is in contact with the ground so the area of contact here has increased a lot and that is the reason why we have a much greater force of friction for this wooden box and also the weight of this box also contributes to the force of friction here and that uh, these two factors make the force of friction larger in the, in the case of this heavy box so here the, uh, a heavy box can also be moved if pushed with a very strong force since the force of push becomes greater than the opposing force of friction in that case so here since we have applied a greater force which is greater than the force of friction the body starts moving so here uh, till now we what whatever we have seen we can conclude from that that uh, the unbalanced forces are the one which is the main reason for a body to move now whenever uh, we have a set of balanced forces acting on a body the body was not at all changing its state of motion i mean uniform motion or rest but if we want our body to change its state we need to have an unbalanced force acting on it so here we can conclude that the cause of motion of a body is a set of unbalanced forces which are acting on a body so now let us look at some examples the first example would be the same that is a suitcase held steady in the hand of a man this example we have already looked at when when we were talking about the balanced forces this suitcase was balanced by two forces acting on it the first one was the force of gravity which is its weight and the second one was the force of pull which was exerted by this man who was holding the suitcase intact now suppose the man releases the suitcase for a while then what will happen the suitcase falls down isn't it but what happens actually is that this force of pull is taken is taken back which what i mean to say is this force of pull disappears when the man releases the suitcase this force of pull being applied by the man itself by the man himself gets vanished when uh, he releases the suitcase now here what what is happening is that this uh, force of gravity is the only thing which comes into play when the force of pull is removed so here the, there is nothing to balance this force of gravity for the suitcase so this suitcase on released uh, when released comes down that is it falls down to the ground because it was acted upon only by the force of gravity when the force of pull was removed and as a result it falls down to the ground now here was an unbalance in the forces acting on the suitcase since the force of pull was removed and because of this unbalanced forces the suitcase falls down to the ground now another example could be a rolling uh, football which comes to a stop after some time it doesn't roll forever 
it comes to a stop after rolling for some time and this is because of the force of friction again now whenever a body is moving the force of friction is constantly coming uh, constantly acting on the body which is in motion and when we don't apply any force on to the body which is in mo which is in motion the force of friction takes over and the body stops now this force of friction is acting against the motion of the body and this makes the body to come to stop so here an unbalanced force of friction acts on the ball which brings it to a stop after some time okay so uh, let us learn something more about unbalanced forces what an unbalanced forces can do so an unbalanced force a set of unbalanced forces can change the state of a body from rest or uniform motion they can move a stationary body that is uh, whenever a body is at rest an unbalanced force can move it or set it in motion or this unbalanced force can also stop a moving body also they can change the speed of the moving body as well as the direction of the moving body so these are a few things which the unbalanced forces can do to a body now if the speed or the direction of a moving body changes then some unbalanced forces act is acting on it now this is opposite to these things that we have seen here we have seen that Uh, the unbalanced force can change the state of the body it can set the body to motion it can stop a moving body it can change the speed or direction of the moving body but whenever we observe a change in speed of a moving body or a change in direction of a moving body or a change in the state of motion of a moving body or the state of rest of a moving body then we can conclude that there was an unbalanced force which was acting on that particular body and also if there were no force of friction and no air resistance then a bicycle would move forever now when we pedal a bicycle and leave it it stops after some time and this is because of the frictional forces or the air resistance which comes into play in the opposite direction of motion to the bicycle but what will happen if there is no force of friction or no air resistance the bicycle wheels will roll forever and if we kick the football the kick the football would roll forever it doesn't come it won't come to a stop so these forces play an important role when it comes to moving bodies since the stop moving bodies uh, i mean the stop moving bodies yes so uh, with this we have discussed whatever is there uh, for unbalanced fo forces in this chapter and in this video we have learned that if the net force acting on a body uh, is not zero we call such set of forces acting on that body to be unbalanced forces these unbalanced forces uh, can change the state of rest or of motion of a body they can stop a moving body or they can move a body which is at rest they can even change the speed or direction of a moving body so with this we have come to the end of this video and i hope this video was fully understandable for you thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning